Welcome everyone. Welcome to Fierce Friday 2021. This year is going to be jumping off. Do you hear me? Jumping off on top of the accomplishments of 2020. We have envisioned and already put into works the 2021 of our dream and vision that will empower each of us and the movement as a whole. My name is Rebecca Johns. I'm coming to you live from Southeast Michigan. Say it with me, Flint, Michigan, to be exact. And it is my privilege to be your MC for today's episode of Fierce Friday. The Fierce Friday context, this movement within the movement was the brainchild of our chairperson, Stephanie Dawn, out there in the lovely Washington. Give her a shout out. And this brainchild is on purpose. It is an intentional opportunity to come together each week inside of the Million Mom Movement Intention because we are a grassroots organization and we educate and empower and mobilize the people in the movement to be conscious consumers and activists for a clean food system. Much of what we deserve, right? You hear Stephanie say the words regularly, health and wealth sovereignty. So this week is no different. We're bringing you extraordinary information and an exceptional guest who will introduce just momentarily. What I'd like to do right now is if you are a Million Mom Movement Council member, would you please drop a C down in the chat so that everyone uh, can identify you as a council person, possibly even follow you on your social media. If you've got a handle that you can drop as well in Instagram or Facebook, drop that council people so that our constituents can know us, follow us, get connected to us and continue to build those relationships that make us so fierce together. Look, my friends, there is no million mom movement without all y'all. The six of us are just moms that get together with ideas and visions and hopes for the world we want to create, but it is together with you in the field that the real work happens. So we're so grateful for your attendance today. And um, along with our council, we have our special guest today, Brett Haas, who is a functional medicine practitioner and a clinical nutritionist. And Jody Parker is going to be giving a formal introduction and interview with Brett today as we talk about the negative impacts of heavy metals in our systems, but also the appropriate and most effective ways to detox heavy metals. Super important to do, but also super important to do properly. Okay, so look, don't let buzzwords yeah, fool yeah. you. What I'd like to do though is for now pass the microphone to cart, or we go down oh, there. We need to mute microphones. I'm gonna leave that to you, Rachel. Um, if you would though, let's welcome Jody Parker, who's going to read for us the Million Mom Movement pledge. Well, thank you, Rebecca. Welcome, everyone. So happy to see so many people. We're almost 100 people. Sorry, guys, we don't give away points like Debbie Darling does, but we're very happy to see you here today at the Million Mom Movement, looking for 100 moms or caregivers movement of many in a thousand cities to help 10 families get healthier and wealthier. And we have a pledge that goes along with that on our website, I'm going to share my screen. It's right here under join the movement and you can go ahead and join right there and you can see our pledge right at the bottom of that page. I pledge to defend the health of my family and of myself. I pledge to reject GMOs, artificial ingredients, trans fats and over processed foods. I pledge to educate myself, read labels and lead by example. I understand that my actions today will positively impact the health of future generations. I am committed to sharing this message and this mission until we are a million moms strong. And Absolutely, minimum. Minimum a million, right, Jody? Minimum, we'll know we've really shown up when we get our million. All right, and, and the context of the, the heart of 
the Fierce Friday Calls was initially really around the conversation of glyphosate, that active ingredient in Monsanto's Roundup that is saturating our food systems, our air and water and soil tables. And when Stephanie um, first brainchild Fierce Friday about the conversation of glyphosate, she also created a letter writing campaign, which has now become a petition to General Mills to make a change because their Cheerios cereal is the number one product on the market that holds more parts per billion of glyphosate than any other product that exists. And so we've petitioned them to say, please engage with us in a dialogue. Let us be your partner in creating alternatives to toxic foods, be the change with us, lead the way. And so I'd love if our council member, uh, Nayeva Flory, who's in ground zero of glyphosate world there in Hawaii, if you would please, Nayeva, speak a little bit on the subject of glyphosate, especially from your perspective there in Hawaii, and then about the petition, which we will post in the link. Hey, aloha everyone, coming at you from beautiful Kauai this morning. And yes, Hawaii is ground zero for glyphosate and um, GMOs particularly. Most people don't know this. The reason being that in Hawaii, we don't have four seasons the same way as the continental US. We don't have those really cold climates. And so it would usually take seven generations to wipe out a strain and create a GMO hybrid seed. Would take seven years in the continent here in Hawaii, they can do it in under two years. They can do those seven seasons. Because we don't have that harsh winter, because we have a pretty mild climate throughout the year, they're able to, every three months, create, replant that seed and continue their process to that hybrid seed um, and patent a GMO okay. seed that then they sell to the people on the continent that grow all the corn, the wheat, the oats, and the food that gets then fed to either animals as feed or put into cereals and foods that we then consume. So this is where we start becoming really concerned as parents and just as people here on this planet, because if we are eating food and we don't know the toxic ingredients in our food that's causing disease or havoc in our gut, then what can we do about it, right? Well, we found the root cause. The root cause is these chemicals that they're putting on the food. It doesn't wash off. It doesn't boil out. It doesn't cook out. It's there forever. So it absorbs into the food. Then they use that food, you know, they use those products that they grew to make into food for humans or animals. And so then we consume it. It goes into our body and it, it just starts to wreak havoc and create all kinds of autoimmune issues or health issues. Um, and it's important that we target this at the root cause. So number one, we wanna encourage you to please choose organic when possible, shop locally if possible and support your local economy and farmers. And then, you know, if you don't have local organic good produce, Perium is the next best thing that we have. And we all have it at our fingertips. We're so fortunate to have been introduced to this by somebody that really loves us and wants the best for our health. And so, like um, Rebecca mentioned, last year we started with a letter writing campaign to General Mills because we found that Cheerios has the most parts per billion of this glyphosate residue in the finished product that we feed our children, you guys. But that's crazy, right? And the FDA approves it. And so this is really scary because it's been proven that just eating, you know, one bowl of Cheerios can actually start the process of wreaking habit, havoc on your gut. So we started a letter writing campaign. We found that as super busy moms, writing a letter is often something that may not get around to happening. And so, and we were also getting very generic responses that weren't, we weren't touching anybody. We weren't actually speaking to anybody or getting through to their heart and their feelings. And we were just getting auto responses from, you know, from their company basically. And so we decided to pivot. And I think it was about six months ago in the summertime that we decided to write a, a petition instead. We find that petitions, you know, they're super simple. You can email them to your friends. It's one click of a button and you enter your email address and you're good to go. And then your name's been entered. And so I think we're about 
two thirds of the way to our first thousand signatures. And we would love to encourage you to please go sign the petition if you haven't already. Share that petition far and wide with your friends and family and those you love and start the conversation of how you can start helping them to remove these toxic foods from their family's pantry and how they can replace it with healthier options. So thank you so much. Back to you, Rebecca. Just so brilliantly shared. Nayeva, thank you so much. And for those of you who follow the Million Mom Movement on social media, Facebook or Instagram, Nayeva is our social media maestro. So if you're seeing that work, that is Nayeva. She is amazing. And I'll be telling you later about a workshop she'll be leading later in the month that you can learn from her and her amazing social media skills. The Million Mom Movement did begin as moms on a mission. 1,000, the intention was 1,000 moms in 100 cities helping 10 families eat healthier. But before, that MOM is now a movement of many. Moms, dads, educators, caregivers, interested parties who want to make a change and be conscious in their lifestyle. So we're grateful today to have our special guest speaking on an important topic. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jody Parker, who will uh, properly introduce our special guest and interview uh, for great wisdom for all of us. Take it away, Jode. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm going to kind of lead up to this for a second, Brett, so bear with me. Okay. So <laughs> I was talking about glyphosate and one of the things that glyphosate does is it is a mineral chelator. What that means is it can absorb the minerals in the soil, good or bad, and it does the same thing in our body. And minerals are key in our body to keep our biological processes working correctly. And when they get out of balance, then that affects all the chemical reactions in our body. And then you think about it and we're exposed to things like mercury in fish, in some pharmaceuticals. We are exposed to lead in old houses with the paint. Um, I forgot something. Mercury is also used in the manufacturing process for corn syrup. So there is trace mercury in your corn syrup. And then you can look at all these different heavy metals coming from pollution, from cars, from all that you know, you're going to have your aluminums, your bariums, your strontiums, the things in your flame retardants, in your couch, and in your children's pajamas. We And anything you put on your skin, it's going to get absorbed into your body. So we have to look at our drinking water, at our food, at how much glyphosate is on our food, in what we're wearing, in what we're sitting and sleeping on, it's endemic. And that's why this particular subject is so important. And we've been leading up to this through the past couple of months with all the different interviews we've done. And if you wanna go back and look at those interviews, you can go to our YouTube channel, channel Million Mom Movement on YouTube and see all our past interviews. But that is what has led us here today because heavy metals can have a huge impact on our biological processes and not a good one. And so I am so excited that my friend Brett is here. And let me tell you a little about him. I'm going to read it right off my phone so I don't miss anything. He's a certified functional medicine practitioner and clinical holistic nutritionist with 16 years of clinical experience. He runs a clown-based online clinic with a primary focus on chronic and complex digestive issues, hormone health, and autoimmune diseases. He's been lead faculty at the Institute of Holistic Nutrition for 14 years, where he now works as a student clinic advisor. And he also runs a digestive health practitioner masterclass for clinicians and practitioners. His podcast consistently ranks in the top 200 alternative health podcasts in North America because he's up in Canada. So your holistic health masterclass starts now. Welcome, Brett. Thank you so much for joining us today. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. And it's great to see so many people on the call. Um, I've uh, been paying attention to what you've been doing kind of on the peripheral. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on these days. So uh, it was great for me to hear the intro and to kind of really catch up uh, on, on what you guys are doing. So it's fantastic. Um, keep, keep it going. Great work. Um, and uh, good to be here. Thank you so much. So let's dive into this. So heavy metals. Let's start with how do you know if your heavy metals uh, are toxic in your body? What are some symptoms, some signs of that? 
Yeah, I mean, I'll, I guess I'll back up a little step because one of the challenges that we have is, is just that. It's like, what are the, what are the signs? What are the symptoms? And, you know, it's, it's all over the place, to be honest. Um, this is why detecting heavy metals based just on symptoms is very challenging for a lot of people. Um, if, I, if I was to sort of like put a few boxes out there, the first big one is most heavy metals are going to cause neurological issues. Um, so, so brain and nervous system tend to get affected a lot. So when you start looking at things like copper toxicity, mercury toxicity, um, lead as well, you'll find that that's, that's where they manifest. All right. And so that's how they present, um, which makes it very challenging because that could also be related to a bunch of other stuff. Right. Um, the other uh, er big area is the GI tract. So, so gut health. And if you look at things like mercury, for example, mercury has a very strong affinity for the lining of the GI tract, um, as one example. Um, the other area is hormones. Um, huge. You know, a lot of heavy metals can, um, I'm sure we'll talk about this a little bit more, but they, they essentially will lodge themselves into the glands of the body. Um, so the endocrine organs or the glands of the body that make all of our hormones, they tend to be the fattiest tissue in our body. And so they tend to accumulate all of the toxins, right? And of course, heavy metals go, goes along with that. So I always say, you know, if you've got fat soluble toxins, um, easy to accumulate, harder to get rid of because we tend to store these things in the fatty tissues of the body. So no surprises, brain, nervous system, fats, um, you know, the, the hormones and the glands, fats as well. Um, so I think that those are some of the, the big areas. Um, and yeah, I, I think I would probably leave it at that because then you can also start getting into the, like the peripheral stuff. I mean, I think another important one is mitochondrial health. So you'll actually find that energy um, being sluggish, like no matter what you've tried. So let's say you're, you know, you're eating right and you're doing all of these things the right way and you're exercising, but you still feel tired all the time. Um, oftentimes that can be because the metals are, are kind of disrupting the way that your cells are working and the way that your energy production is happening. And then the last thing I'll say is autoimmune disease, J just as a blanket um, statement, you know, we we're starting to understand that heavy metals are quite heavily involved with a lot of autoimmune issues now. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably a good, uh, ho hopefully that wasn't too much of a shotgun answer, but I, I wish I had a straight answer for you. <laughs> I think that kind of sums up basically that it affects all systems of the body and that's why it's such a big deal. And I want to kind of build on what you just said about toxins build up in the fat in our body and our body will use that fat to protect us. So that's one of the reasons that we wait had these, these detox symptoms is because we're releasing that. But most testing for heavy metals is done in blood and if it's high in the blood then it's really really high because it has saturated the fat so can you talk a little bit about the testing for heavy metals and why blood tests if they're really high already then you're already in a huge danger zone and maybe some other ways we could catch it early yeah i mean i think uh before i even get into testing you know the you said it in the beginning always look at your environment first because, you know, it's, um, if, if you can test, which we'll get into in a minute, but, you know, if you're not, if you don't know where it's coming from, and you don't know what's going on in your environment, then, you know, you're, you're kind of like shooting in the dark a little bit. Um, so I'll kind of pull those things together. So testing, um, the, the easiest test that someone can do is what's called a hair mineral analysis. So it's, it's uh, literally looking at hair. And I know this is kind of controversial. Like if I had a bunch of other practitioners sitting there, some people would say, oh, no, it's not accurate. And um, some people would say, yes, it's accurate. But if I was to really um, investigate heavy metal toxicity in someone, I would do a number of different tests. So the first one um, that we can do just on a very surface level to give us an idea of what's going on is doing a hair mineral analysis. It's very cost effective. Um, it's got some pitfalls, of course, it's not 100% accurate. But what I love about the hair mineral analysis is it gives you the toxic metals, but then it also looks at your um, minerals as well. And what, what we find is that a lot of the toxic metals will displace minerals in your body. So for example, um, we'll see that copper and zinc have a symbiotic relationship. So if you've got copper toxicity, your zinc levels are going to be low. Okay, selenium might also be low. 
and uh, and you can kind of keep going down that road. We find calcium, magnesium will often be low. Uh, so so that's what what I like about it because it doesn't just look at a quantitative value. It also looks at the relationship between the beneficial minerals and the toxic metals. Okay, so that that's a good starting point. It's very cost effective, and I find it's easy enough for people to do. The, the second thing that we would do, and some people might actually do this first, is you would do what's called a challenge test. And so a challenge test can be done in the urine or it can be done in the stool. And uh, basically what you do is you drink a solution that would challenge your body to essentially dump some of the metals out of the tissue so that we can then get a more accurate gauge of what's going on in your body by measuring stool or measuring urine. And then the last thing would be, um, instead of just looking at blood levels, what we would do is we'd actually want to look at the levels that are inside the red blood cells. Okay, so that, that's like a very advanced um, functional medicine test. I say advanced because it's cutting edge and most people haven't heard of it, but it's it's just a blood draw. You know, it's nothing fancy. But what I love about that is, you, you know, um, when, you, when you're looking at these toxic elements inside the cells, now it's not only a, a measure of quantitative value in your body, it's also how much are they affecting the way your cells are working, which is huge. Because this is why, and, and I'll just sort of like sidestep for a minute here, but this is why when we look at, um, when we look at nutrients, right? Like I'm not a huge fan of blood testing for nutrients because most of what they do is they just measure your serum levels of nutrients and most of them are going to come out normal. Right. I've, I've, I've seen like two people in my life that have had low sodium or low potassium or, or what have you. But when you start measuring inside the cells, now you can see that the serum levels are good, but it's not actually getting inside the cell, which is where all of the metabolism is happening. So it's, it's, um, you, you present with what's called functional deficiencies or you present with functional toxicity. If, if that makes sense. So that's kind of um, the, the general landscape with regards to testing. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of hand it back over to you if you have any more questions on that. I think I'll just sum up for everyone because that was a lot of big words. And I, I saw some people going, whoa. So let's just sum up hair analysis, stool and urine, challenge testing, blood testing, but what is inside the cell versus what is outside in the serum levels will give you a better feeling for how it's actually affecting the metabolism of the cell. And just for those of you who may not be as in tune with high school biology, inside the cell, the mitochondria is the part of the cell that makes the energy for your body. And so he mentioned that it can affect your, your mitochondria and your ability to create energy for the cell. So that is also why it's a big deal. And so now that we've got that summed up, let's move on to, okay, now what do we do about it? What are things that help to balance it, to help get it out of the body? Um, you know, Purium has a lot of products that will assist mm -hmm. with that. That's not everything. So let's start with the perium stuff and how we can use that. And then let's, you know, branch it out into some of sure. the bigger modalities being used. So yeah. back to you. Um, so I think the, the first step on any, um, I'll just throw a couple of blanket statements out there. Um, the first step is removing exposure, as I said before. So I know that a lot of people on this call have already cleaned up their home environment. We're using clean personal care products. Um, we're not using lotions and deodorants with aluminum in them and all that sort of stuff. So we really want to just clean up your home, clean up your environment. Your cleaning products is another one. Because I always like to say, you know, there's things that we can control and then there's things that we can't control. So I can't control the cars driving around outside. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't control the office that I work in and the off-gassing of the carpets or what have you. I, there's nothing I can do about that. The thing I can control is I can control my home environment and the probably probably the area that you really want to focus on because you spend about a third of your life in there is your bedroom. Okay, so the bedroom, we spend a lot of time there. So cleaning up your bedroom, you know, not having um, like, like stuff coming in. Um, of course, then clean water, water filters, all of the stuff that I'm sure many of us are doing already. Um, so when it comes to detoxification, you, you want to be a little bit careful about detoxifying heavy metals. It's always something that I've been a little bit, I'm always a little bit cautious about it. And I think um, there, there's a way to do it, but I prefer doing things a little bit slowly. 
so low and slow is a safe way to do it um, especially for us here you know people on this call that are not practitioners that don't have a clinical background low and slow is the way to go okay so minimize exposure low and slow uh, cleaning up the food supply, which is what you spoke about before at the beginning of this call, going organic, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then the um, talking about some products. So I'm, I'm very familiar with the Purium products, obviously. And I'll, I'll just uh, throw a couple of ingredients out there and then talk about some of the products. Fol folic acid is, um, is, is a rock star when it comes to chelating uh, toxins generally speaking okay so chelating binding up toxins in the body and so um, one of the products that I used for years and years is ionic elements so the ionic elements are the trace mineral drops okay because remember the the heavy metals are going to displace the minerals yes okay so it's good that we want to use fulvic acid to do the binding and the chelating and all of that but we also want to put in the beneficial minerals because they're most likely depleted and not only that because there's com this competition between absorption they're they're going to push the metals out very slowly but also any other metals coming in from the air from the food supply it's going to help to bind them before they even get into the body okay so that's that's a, a huge huge um, nutrient for me and i've been a huge fan of fulvic acid ever since i learned about it um, almost 20 years ago Okay, so it's something I've been taking um, almost every day for that long. Now, um, so there's the ionic elements. Obviously, there's biomedic, um, which, which has uh, fulvic and humic acids in it, together with a few other things. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I know looking at the previous studies on glyphosate with biomedic, um, I know that it does help to remove glyphosate from the bloodstream, but I'm not sure if it's going to help to remove um, heavy metals from the bloodstream. However, I would say it would definitely be very, very good for um, binding up metals in the gut, okay, which, which is huge, all right? Um, another rock star, I think probably perhaps even more than fulvic acid is chlorella, okay? So chlorella is, is really next level. Um, and chlorella, I actually just did a podcast this week on blue-green algaes, by the way, um, with someone else. And so I got schooled. It was awesome. She just like went off the deep end. I was like, whoa, mind blown. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so it's kind of fresh in my mind, some of the stuff, right? But one of the things I learned was that, um, you know, we've known that chlorella binds um, metals, particularly mercury. And we kind of like, we've got good data on that from the human perspective, you know, so we know that chlorella binds heavy metals in the gut, um, sorry, mercury in the gut and good. But there's a lot of newer research now that's suggesting that it also binds up other things. So it's also going to bind up aluminum, it's going to bind up lead, it's going to bind up some of these other things, cadmium and so forth. Um, and one of the cool things that I learned just in the last couple of weeks is that it does actually do systemic detoxification. So in other words, it's not just binding it locally in the gut, it's actually going to bind it in the bloodstream as well. Okay. And uh, I would sort of like tack on um, radiation uh, on top of that as well. So um, there's long, long history of use now in Fukushima, um, in Chernobyl, um, you know, there's a long use of using chlorella to bind up a lot of these toxins. Um, so um, and of course, then, you know, if you're like greens powders are, are amazing for so many different reasons, um, you know, the chlorophyll in there is, is a big one. Chlorophyll is well known as a cleanser. Um, you know, it's also the, the chlorella has lots of nutrients in there as well. Okay, spirulina has lots of nutrients in there as well. Spirulina has different types of nutrients to chlorella, um, but again, lots of minerals. Right. So just think of minerals, minerals, minerals. And what this is going to do is, is not just bind things up, but it's slowly going to push things out. OK, slowly going to push the metals out and displace them in the body. Um, See, so yeah, I mean, any of your greens powders, I know the Power Shake um, has uh, has chlorella in it, I believe. And it's got I mean, it's got tons of other greens in there. Uh, so those types of things will really um, help as well. And um, I'm just trying to think, are there any other products that you that, that you want to bring up, Jody? Um, I would say a couple others. Beets. Yes. And uh, the sea from nature um, because of its effect on white blood cells. You want to talk about that? Sure. A little bit? Yeah. I mean, uh, vitamin C is just, 
if there's, it's probably the nutrient that has the most widespread action in the body. Uh, I mean, it's, it's anti everything from antiviral, anti, you know, bacterial and whatnot, um, anti-inflammatory, um, stabilizes histamine production, um, antioxidant. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think, um, vitamin C, like everyone should be taking that, uh, regardless of what's going on. Um, but, uh, what was the other thing you said? Beets. Yeah. So anything that's, there's a bit of a challenge, right? So beets we know is a blood builder. Okay. So it helps to build the blood, um, red blood cells particularly, but we also know that beets will help with detoxification. Okay. But the, the action of beets is more specific to the liver. So it helps with liver detoxification. So I would kind of like stop my shell, myself short of saying beets are going to detox heavy metals. However, I would say that as I'm starting to mobilize these metals with ionic elements or with biomedic or some of these other things that are going to start moving things out, um, adding beets to the mix is a good idea because what it's going to do is as everything gets triaged to the liver, you know, you want to make sure that the liver is now moving and the liver is detoxifying. And uh, from there, you want to actually also perhaps add something like a super cleanser. Um, because as the, as the liver dumps its toxins into the gut, now if you, got, you don't want constipation to be happening, um, which does actually happen with heavy metals, by the way. It's actually one of the, one of the symptoms of heavy metals. So yeah, so that's a, that's a pretty neat, um, neat protocol there. Um, anything that supports the kidneys is also a very good idea because when you look at how heavy metals are eliminated from the body, Okay, so yes, some of it, especially stuff that's in the gut is going to go out through the gut, but metals are largely excreted through the kidneys. And how do we know that? Because we know that the, the skin, right, so we'll talk about saunas in a minute, but they've analyzed the sweat of people that, are, that have done infrared saunas, and they've got crazy high levels of metals. And the, the skin is the third kidney, Okay, so say that again, the skin is the third kidney. So everything that the kidneys eliminate, the skin is going to eliminate as well. Okay, so if I want to lighten the load on my kidneys, infrared saunas are the way to go. Because now I can do the chlorella, I can do all of the ionic elements and all the stuff we spoke about. And now um, if, if I want to support my kidneys because I'm ramping up detoxification, now I can get in the sauna and the sauna is going to help me to just sweat everything out, okay? And um, that, that's actually one of the sort of cornerstones of good heavy metal detoxification, even if you do nothing else, to just um, get in a sauna like two or three times a week, start slowly, just 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And, um, and you know, again, like as your tolerance gets better and your detoxification capacities get better, um, then you can actually um, really start driving up the supplements as well and uh, kind of put, put it all together, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. And I know one thing that we've also done in our families after the sauna, we get on a vibration plate or on a mm. trampoline to help move that lymph and help get it moving through the body to get it out. So yeah. I'm loving this. And I want to piggyback on what you just said about we want to start low and slow. We want to build up to it. Don't, this is not a situation that I'm a grasshopper. I'm not a baby stepper. I'm like a big leaper, mm -hmm. but I can't do that because I get sick. So let's talk about that. Talk about Herxheimer reactions, about the signs that you're detoxing faster than your body can process it and why that's dangerous. Yeah. So um, I'll just, I'll, I'll just uh, address that as a general detox question. And then we'll kind of segue a little bit into heavy metal specifically, when you think of detoxification, right, there's two general ways that we can detoxify. Um, the one way is I can use targeted nutrients and th that really focus in on the liver, on the kidneys, on the lymphatics, on the skin, on whatever it is, the bowel, and I can drive the, the dosage right up and essentially force everything out. Okay, that's one way we can do a forced detoxification or a targeted detoxification. The other way is I I remove the triggers, I remove the toxins, I remove exposure, and then I provide an environment for my body to do what it naturally is going to do because your body can naturally detoxify if you give it the right environment. Okay, you, you, can't, you can't detoxify if, uh, I'm just going to put you on the pin video here so I can uh, see you. Where are you? Okay, I think I lost you, Jody, but anyway. Um, 
I just want to make sure that you come back on the screen so I can see you. It's okay. I'm here. Okay, cool. There you are. Um, so, so, and, and that, that's kind of what the, if you think about the 10-day the transformation, I mean, that is what the 10-day transformation does, is, is you're providing that environment and then you're flooding your body with the necessary nutrients in a lower dose, in a whole food broad spectrum format, so that you're not pushing too hard. And a good analogy here, and you know, as a clinician, I do both of those things, right? So I do the heavy duty detoxes because people want to get better now, not in six months time. But the analogy that I like to use is if I had 50 people in this room and I told everyone to get up and walk out at the same time, okay, it's going to be a stampede. They're going to break the door. And so, so doing those high dose type of protocols can be very challenging for a lot of people because if your organs are already weak, they essentially buckle under the pressure. Okay, and this is why people have these negative type of reactions on detox protocols. Usually they have negative reactions because they go too hard, too fast is, is what's happening. Okay, so what I've often done in clinic, um, just so you all know, I've put probably almost 1,500 um, patients through the 10-day transformation and different variations thereof. So I've, done a, I've worked a lot with Purium over the years. I've worked a lot with that program. And oftentimes what I would do is, um, you know, I actually have a few clients on there right now, is you put them on the 10-day 10 10 day program or 15 or 30, however you want to do that, and basically just like provide that environment, give their body a break, and then move into something that's a bit more targeted. Okay, so in the case of heavy metals here, you might want to do a 10-day or something like that. Set yourself up, tee yourself up, and then start doing the saunas afterwards. Then start bringing in um, the ionic elements. Another product that I forgot about is um, the fulvic zeolite. Fulvic zeolite's next level for heavy metals, okay? Um, and that's just because of its honeycomb-like structure. It really traps a lot of those metals. And it's funny because in, prep, in prepping for this, I was like, oh, yeah, fulvic zeolite. I got to remember that, and I totally forgot it. Anyway, um, so uh, some of the signs that you might be detoxifying too quickly, uh, you're going to, on the, on the very low level, you're going to find things like um, headaches, okay? So headaches. Nausea would be another one. So you just feel sick, you feel tired. Um, that those are very mild, okay. But when it comes to metal specifically, you got to always make sure that the doors are open before you clean the house, okay. So what that means is I got to make sure that things are moving, right? So this is where something like super cleanser would come in. Make sure that the bowels are moving. Make sure that the liver is moving. Make sure that things are flowing, so that when you start driving toxins out of the tissue. They don't, they don't move from one part of the body to another. Okay, so again, if I, if I had all the windows and doors closed and I try to clean my house, I'm basically moving garbage from one side of the, of the room to the other side. Okay, and as we all know from cleaning the house, we get hot, we get sweaty, it's not a pleasant time, but we feel awesome once we're done, right? So um, with metals, I uh, will just say you got to be a little bit careful about, um, about pushing metals too quickly. And I'm not going to like try and scare anyone here, but I've had this happen a couple of times where people start getting neurological issues because they're detoxifying too quickly. Okay. So uh, like they, they can't focus, they might start getting some twitching. Okay. So things can, and if you, you know, I had one guy, this was not me, but I'll just share a little story with you. Uh, there was a guy at the health food store that my friend used to work at. And he started learning about heavy metals, right? So he came in and said, oh, well, you know, I want this heavy metal kit. And my friend, who's a really good practitioner, she said, well, you know, you, do you, have you done any testing? Do you know what's going on? And, uh, you know, because if, if your levels are very high and you do this type of, of intensive detox, you could hurt yourself. And he said, no, no, I'm just going to do it. And it's a heavy-duty metal claim, so it's nothing like we're talking about here. But what happened with him was he was driving down the road. He was about five days into that cleanse. And he blacked out behind the wheel, which was crazy. Okay, fortunately, he was fine. Like, nothing bad happened. But he blacked out behind the wheel. And that's, again, th that's a very severe case of a very bad detox reaction to metals particularly. Okay? Everything that we've spoken about here today is not going to do that for you. Okay? So doing things like chlorella, fulvic zeolite, ionic elements, the, you know, the greens powders, any of that stuff, it's, it's a safer, gentler uh, way of doing it 
but just don't expect that you're going to detox medals in a two week program, right? It's, it's a, it's a longer game that you're playing. I noticed, um, is that good, Jody? I, I don't know if you have any other questions or I know the chat box is blowing up as well. I see that. I want to touch on one other thing before we open it up to questions. Very, Please. very quickly. I am that girl who can detox too fast. I had mercury poisoning, detox mm. too fast, gave me really bad insomnia, huge swollen lymph. So I know this story. And I'm also that girl who has the genetic issues, who doesn't mm -hmm. detox. Efficiently. And so a lot of people are going to come and talk about MTHFR, which stands for metro, eh, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. It's the yeah. enzyme that helps you process B9. For those who are wondering, B9 is folate, folic acid is a synthetic version yeah. of that. And that's why we say don't use that. But a lot of people make a really big deal out of that. And you and I know that in and of itself is not that big of a deal. And so I just want to bring that up a little bit and talk about why are people talking about the genetic issues with detox, how mm -hmm. to affect the bio production and the detox pathways, just so that if you are one of those sensitive people, just give a shout out so that people kind of understand the framework of that because it's way too deep to go into, but yeah, 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 yeah. it was important to bring it up because it comes up often and MTHFR in and of itself is really not the issue. So can you just talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, so MTHFR is basically an enzyme um, that helps to convert um, folic acid or folate from food convert that into an active form or a methylated form. Okay, so an active form. Uh, it does the same thing with B12, by the way, and it does the same thing with a few other of the B vitamins. But basically, the, the, very, the very simple 101 Reader's Digest story is those nutrients need to be activated or methylated before they can power something called the methylation cycle. So your methylation cycle, one of the things that it does is it, um, it helps to detoxify. Right. So it produces something called glutathione, which is a master antioxidant in the body. OK, so master antioxidant, anti-inflammatory uh, and of course, a major detoxer because it's a sulfur compound. OK, so sulfur, sulfur is cleansing in the body. Okay, repair as well, but cleansing as well. So the thing is um, with MTHFR, first of all, about 40 percent of the population actually have a genetic defect. And I say that in very loose terms. It's a genetic defect whereby you just don't um, activate those B vitamins very well. Okay, that, that's all. You just don't activate them very well. And um, maybe you're not going to detoxify at 100% capacity. Maybe you're functioning at 70% capacity. Okay, And if it's really bad, maybe you're functioning at 30%. However, um, I think it's always important for people to realize that genetics, genetics loads the gun. Lifestyle pulls the trigger. Okay, so... You know, when people zoom in on the genetic piece, they always go, oh, my gosh, like I got like double snips on MTHFR. That's it. I'm never going to detoxify. I may as well just like go and, you know, um, eat cheeseburgers and, and drink beer all day long because w whatever, you know, uh, the same thing happens when people get, you know, they see these predispositions towards Alzheimer's or anything else. They freak out and they think, oh, my gosh, like I'm for sure going to get Alzheimer's. But here's the thing. Um, when I say that lifestyle pulls the trigger, what it means is epigenetic factors. So the things that are going on around you, you know, if, if, if I'm, if I'm in the swimming pool and I've got bricks in my pocket and I'm trying to get out of the pool, well, you can throw me a life jacket is one thing, but I could just take the bricks out of my pocket and then I could get out the pool. Right? So it's the same kind of idea when you think about food and you think about the environment. And as we just said, if you clean up your environment you clean up your food supply, you start eating right, what's going to happen is even though you have that genetic predisposition, you're not feeding the predisposition, you're actually supporting it with everything else because you can't change your, you're not going to change your, your SNP or your DNA. That's just how it is, but you can support it in every other way. So again, I, I, I refer back to Alzheimer's because people say, well, gosh, I'm going to get Alzheimer's. Well, it's like, well, there's heavy implications between aluminum and Alzheimer's. So what if you just decided to get the aluminum out of your body? What if you minimized your exposure and then you took care of your brain health with all sorts of other nutrients? You're, you're now at least saying, I'm going to give myself a fighting chance. Now that I know that, I'm not going to get it, right? And so it's the same thing here with detoxification. It's, um, you know, people like that. And, and I will say this, if you're going with whole foods and whole food supplements, you're at far lower risk for aggravating 
that it's it's when you go with high synthetic nutrients that the MTHFR thing really becomes a problem. Okay, so low and slow, no problems with MTHFR. Ah, I love that. That was a great explanation. Thank you. I think I've seen the questions coming up, and I think one of the big ones that as a the Million Mom Movement, we yeah. should address is the breastfeeding pregnancy issue because that's a really big deal. And so can you address talking about detoxing during pregnancy and breastfeeding and especially in relation to heavy metals? Yeah, um, so I, I think, you know, first of all, um, just disclaimer on my part, uh, I find that when, you know, pregnancy and postpartum and nursing and all of that, you do have to be careful. Um, so I always err on the side of caution. Um, you know, I've had people that have come bizarrely for weight loss programs at the beginning of their pregnancy. And I'm like, what do you, what do you want me to do? Like, you're about to put on a whole bunch of weight because you're growing a baby. Like, I don't know, I can't help you. Sorry. Um but I think the the, the problems that um, the problems that come that happen is is more if we're doing the forced type of detoxification, right? So when we're really driving up those nutrients and we're we're really trying to push push push, that's where the problem comes in. The stuff that we've been talking about, um, you know, ionic elements, for example, I probably would not. And I'm, again, I'm just doing this for safety purposes. I might be a little bit more cautious with the zeolite because the zeolite does really push things out. The ionic elements is very safe. Um, it's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of beneficial compounds, like all the trace minerals, et cetera. So that's a, those are actually things that you want to come through in breast milk so that the breast milk is nutrient dense as well. Um, and of course, if you're doing things like chlorella or anything that's gonna bind things, you know, chlorella is loaded with nutrients. Um, you know, we've just been talking about the, the, the detox side of things, but you should know that the way that chlorella detoxes is it's because of the hard cell wall on the outside. It's actually one of the hardest cells, cell walls on the planet. And that hard cell wall will actually bind to toxins, it will bind to viruses, it will bind to pathogens. So it's not that it's pushing things out, it's more that it's pulling things in, if that makes sense. So I would say, you know, your greens, your spirulinas, your chlorellas, no problem at all um, with, with pregnancy and nursing. Uh, I would just be a little bit more cautious on the fulvic zeolite and anything else that's going to really mobilize metals and toxins in the body. Perfect. That's awesome. All right. So we've got about a minute and a half before I have to toss it back to for closing up. So does anybody have I is, was Rebecca yeah. or Stephanie, were you looking at the chat? Was there any other like lots of people ask the same question that you think we need? There's a question that's uh, being repeated, which is how can we support our children detoxing heavy metals? Yeah, well, um, I'll, I'll answer that as well. And, and Jody, um, <laughs> uh, it was actually you, I don't know, it was a few years ago. I remember you posted a, a picture of one of your kids and uh, they had a green mouth, right? And I was like, whoa, I, I commented. I was like, what is that, you know? And he said, oh, it's, um, uh, they, I, think they, I think they were actually chewing chlorella tablets or, or something like that. Um, is, is that right, Jody? Yeah, she does. My daughter, she has it for a snack. She chews the chlorella. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did with my little guy, he's, he's actually, it's his fifth birthday today. So, um, you know, as soon as I get off here, we're going to go have a birthday party. But um, he, so after that, I said, he, I think he was like two years old at the time. I said, oh, you know what? You said, just give it to him, just try it out. So I gave it to him and sure enough, like no problems at all. He just loved it. So I think that chlorella for kids is really good. Um, I do actually give them ionic elements from time to time. So it's not a thing that it's like religiously every day, um, but once or twice a week, you know, just to get the minerals in, to get the fulvic um, and, and fulvic acids in. So I think those are safe. I mean, greens powders, all the stuff we've spoken about, but the thing you don't want to do with kids, and I think it's important to also recognize that kids are far less toxic than adults, right? They just haven't had the time to accumulate toxins. So all the things that we spoke about, minimizing exposure, cleaning up the diet, cleaning up the home environment, I think those go much uh, further than just loading your kids up with tons and tons of supplements, okay? Um, but yeah, so I think the, the basic thing, I mean, the chlorella, the ionic elements, I think are great. Um, Excellent, and thank you so much. I'm gonna just toss out there Epigenius Kids. And yeah. Or take your juice bar in a bag, mix it all in some juice, all six products in some juice, throw a dropper full of fulvic or the ionic elements in there, done. And it tastes like fruit punch. Rebecca, throwing it back to you. 
Wow. Thank you both so much, Brett. We could have you on here talking nonstop till next Fierce Friday. I promise you. <laughs> so thank you so much for the You're generosity of your time. Happy birthday to your son. Thank you thank for being you. a dad on the mission with us. Yeah. Grateful hey, I'm, I'm on the mission. I've been knowledge. on the mission for a long time. Yeah. You certainly have. Thank you for being a pioneer and we hope to have you on again sometime in the future awesome. thank you so much thanks so much. all right I it. well i know that you all took so much away from this conversation with brett haas stay with me we've got just about nine minutes left to the hour i'm going to turn it over to our chair stephanie dawn who's got some important things to speak on herself before i close it up with some announcements at the end beautiful thank you so much rebecca Thank you so much, Brett, for your time. Thank you, Jody, for inviting him. That was incredibly valuable. I took tons of notes, and I know many of us did. So, ah, well, as you know, uh, as Jody stated at the top of the hour here, we are, are on a mission to change lives, the lives of ourselves. <laughs> We're applying everything that Brett's been sharing and all the things that we share here every Friday on Fierce Friday, in the Million Mom Movement official group, and on Instagram. We're applying those things to our lives every day. And many of us who are here today are brand partners, right? So we want to invite you to lock arms with us, to join us in this movement of many. We are here, as Jody mentioned, to reach out to hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people so that we become a million strong. So I wanna invite each and every one of you, if you're here and you're not a brand partner with Purium, I want you to get back with the person that invited you here and help us to forward this mission. Help us to become a force, not just in the United States, but globally, because that's our mission, right? 365 Purium, that's my mission for 2021. All right, 365 Purium. Everything that was shared here today was so incredibly valuable, but, what we need to be doing is sharing our voices, sharing this message, sharing this recording, follow our YouTube channel, all right? And this is how we're gonna make a difference in more lives and getting to a million strong and many million strong. That's my commitment. That's the commitment of this council. And that's the commitment of this movement started by our beloved Amy Venner. So on another note, a bit more personal note, I want you to know that I'm going away for a month. Uh, some of you who've been following us for a while know that I am working to heal cancer naturally in my body. And I'm going away to Costa Rica. So I will not be here for a month. I'm leaving Fierce Friday in the very capable hands of my beautiful council. And I just want to say, I'll see you on the flip side. Send me your prayers and your love as I um, go down to uh, a wellness center down there for an extended water fast. So I'm excited about this journey um, that I'm on here and, uh, and I'm grateful. So thank you so much. Back to you, Rebecca. Stephanie, bless your process, sister. While you are um, upgrading on a cellular level there, we intend to be upgrading together as a mission here. So we'll come back together on the flip side and be stronger upon your return. Stephanie's absolutely right. As I said at the beginning, there is no Million Mom movement without a field of participants. So if you're ready to become a brand partner, absolutely speak to the person who's invited you and ask them about what it will take for you to participate with us. If you're someone who's dealing with financial hardship and you're curious about the opportunity but aren't sure that the dollars and cents can line up, please look into our scholarship opportunity. If one of my council sisters would please put a link into our scholarship information on the millionmommovement.info page, you can learn about the scholarship for the business at no cost to you. This comes with mentorship and structures to support you being successful in the business, as well as a few months of uh, complimentary superfoods from Purium Health Products so that you can be a living testimony of the superfoods as you ramp up your business. So please ask about that. A couple of important events coming up that you all will wanna know about is that on January 20th, our very own Nayeva Flory, who spoke with us from Hawaii today, is going to be sharing with us her social media genius She's leading our monthly Million Mom Movement Business Power Hour, 
That is the 20th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Please do the math for your own time zone from there, but it'll be 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on January 20th. Also next Friday, January 22nd for Fierce Friday, we will be talking about the Family Nutrition Pack. And our very own Jody Parker, who hosted today's interview with Brett, will be breaking down the pack and talking to you about the important elements you'll want to know on how to incorporate this these superfoods for your whole family. A lot of us are curious, what about the kids? How do we incorporate this for the children and for the children's health? How do we make this a lifestyle for the whole family? What do we do? Well, Jody was a um, conspirator, if you will, to get this family nutrition pack brought to iShop Curium. It is one of the bundles that you can purchase and get the business opportunity for free. So check out the information on that. But it's a powerful way to get the whole household in, at all ages engaged in superfoods, organic, non-GMO nutrition, eating a whole foods, creating recipes. Um, Jody and Taz brought us an episode a few weeks ago about even baking and cooking with our superfoods. So check out the YouTube channel of the Million Mom Movement and spread the word. Remember, we are on Instagram and on Facebook and we have our Million Mom official Facebook group page. So we welcome your participation. Um, I believe that we have everything down in the chat. Taz, thank you for holding down the chat. Um, would any of you council members like to have any final words? We've got a couple minutes before we close our hour. Any vital takeaways that you are taking from today's call or anything that you'd like to leave with our peeps? I know I'm throwing you guys on the spot. Hey, I'll take it. I'll catch that ball. All right, next week when we're talking about the family nutrition program, I'm just gonna lay it out here. It's because in February, we are hosting a family nutrition reset with the family nutrition pack for all y'all to get your kids in and we're gonna do it as a group. Um, and so we're, we're setting you up so you know what you're doing, you can get ready, you can help people get the pack in time. It's gonna be mid-February, right after Valentine's Day that we start that because we wanna make sure that people have time to get it shipped to them because we know it's like Christmas all the time right now. And so it's <laughs> slower than we'd like it to be. So I just wanted to give you that heads up, let you know we are hosting a family nutrition reset in February. I love that you gave that little sneak peek, Jody Parker. All right. And Carmela has a, a takeaway as well. What would you like to say, sister? No? Did I miss that? Maybe she was waving goodbye. I thought she was waving to say something. All right, y'all. Well, listen, rewatch this. Okay. This is going to be available on our YouTube channel re-watch this particular episode, take the notes, write down the products that were mentioned, understand the protocol of low and slow for metal detoxification, talk to your uplines and teams, but if you have any questions, feel free to message us on the council and we will be here to support you. Thank you all for another fantastic and fierce, fierce Friday. Have a blessed weekend. We'll see you next week. Peace. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. Great job, Jody. You too, Rebecca. Thanks, babe.